Hey guys, we have a MacBook Pro here, 15 inch um, A1707. It's come in because it's completely dead. There's, not, there's no signs of life whatsoever. Um, if we plug in a charger with our meter here, uh, we get five volts and zero amps. Um, so let's switch over to the overhead view. So yeah, right here, five volts, zero amps. Unplug. We have the battery disconnected. We should be pulling 20 volts, but the machine is pulling five volts, zero amps. So definitely something wrong with the motherboard. Let's uh, start by taking the board out of the housing. All right, now that we have the board pulled, we're just going to run a quick visual inspection Judging by what we're seeing, the uh, board looks absolutely perfect. There is no signs of any water damage or anything like that. So, in this case, we're going to start by measuring power rails. We're going to start with um, the main power rails like PP Bus G3 Hot and see what we get. So, let's get it going here. All right, so we'll plug it in. And we see that we're still getting our five volts, zero amps. Now, let's switch over to the display screen. So let's uh, start by just searching for ppbus underscore g3 hot. Okay, so we can measure it in this area here. Okay, so black probe on ground, red probe right here. So 0 0.017 volt. So we are missing PP bus G3 hot. Back over to the display screen. Uh, what I would do in this situation is right click and go search for PP bus G3 hot in the schematics and we'll use the N key to cycle through these until we find um, where, the, where the signal is being created. <coughs> so right here we see uh, two system output of PP bus G3 hot. Um, so U7000. So if we Search U7000 by right clicking it using Paul Daniels software. Um, flex board view, highly recommended. We'll see the chip. So let's take a look back at the schematics and see kind of how this chip works. So we're, we have a problem with our PP bus G3 hot output. Um, let's uh, check here on PPDC in G3 hot and see if we have voltage. So we can measure that right here. Let's go back over to the overhead view. Okay, so measuring. So so measuring, we do have our normal five volts on that line. Let's take a look back at the display screen again. So this is normal here. So it appears to be getting uh, voltage. Now we check enable. That's going to be PP3V3 G3 hot. So we'll look for that on our board view. We find it here right above our CD3215 USB-C chip. So on R30. 38, it's on the top of this resistor.
Okay, so zero volts. Um, check the schematics. Um, so now we're gonna wanna see kind of how this signal works and where it's coming from. So U6309. So we already know we're missing PP bus G3 hot. So this looks like a situation where that line kind of feeds itself, which means I'm gonna backtrack a bit. I'm going to blame U7000. We're going to um, we're going to change this chip and see what we get. So based on what we found with our measurements, um, I'm gonna start by replacing this IC and see if that solves our problem. I'll start by heating the general area. And once the board is sufficiently heated, uh, then we can focus heat directly onto the chip. So here we go. We're at 400 degrees Celsius and 70 airflow. I'm just gonna put this chip aside in case that um, the chip is actually fine. That way we can uh, reball it and reuse it at some point. So we're gonna add some low melt solder paste to the bonding pads. Turn on our fume extractor. And grab our iron. and some flux. The low melt paste makes it very, very easy uh, to clean the pads with wick. Not connected pad, so nothing to worry about. Okay, now that the pads are all cleaned up, let's take a quick look at the display screen check the orientation of the chip. So you can see that pad one is in the top left there. Um, and then this is that unconnected pad I was referring to. So nothing to worry about if that, uh, if an unconnected pad comes loose because it's literally not connected to anything and that's why it's loose. All right, so with the chip removed, switch over to the overhead view here. So this is the customer board. I'm just gonna put it aside and this is a donor board. We're going to steal that ISL chip from here. So, there it is. Let's pull it off. So same thing, we'll just kind of preheat the area. and then focus heat directly onto the chip. Now we're going to uh we're just going to clean all the pads and the bottom of the, the new chip that we're going to be using. You can do that with uh, some flux and wick.
All right, now I'll grab a stencil and we'll reball it. Let's put the uh, paper towel beneath the chip, which will help with the reballing. Just like that. Put our stencil on top. Okay, let's hold it down. Clean the top. Use paper towel to dry the, the top here. Okay, now we'll just use tweezers to hold it down. And then we'll reball at uh, 290 degrees Celsius and forky airflow. Preheat it in a circular motion. And then come in from one of the corners. Perfect. I'll just add a little bit of flux and reset each of the balls. Oops. Reballing is done. Grab our customer board back. And we remember that the orientation of pad one was in the top left. All right, so grab the chip. Add a little bit of flux. proper orientation. So that marker there on the top left of the chip matches up with pad number one. And since we've reballed with 183 solder paste, we can install this chip with less heat than we needed to remove it initially. So we'll start with um, 370 Celsius and 40 airflow. Watched it reset, which means it's successfully installed. We can always grab our multimeter in diode mode at this point, red probe on ground, and measure around the caps. Make sure we don't find any shorts. Looks good. If we found a short, then it's possible there could have been a joining of 
two of the pads could have bridged and then we'd have to uh, reinstall the chip all right so now that the chip is installed we can switch to the overhead camera view um, and we can test it out so grab the charger and I'm very confident that this is going to work. There's actually no chance that this doesn't work. Okay, 5 volts, 0 amps, and it jumps right to 20 volts. 1.5 amp, perfect. So that did work. So it was a problem with the ISL chip, U7000, or yeah, U7000. So this should be working fine now, judging by the uh, current pole and voltage we've seen on the charge USB-C meter. Um, I'm gonna pop it into the housing and we'll do a final test and make sure we can get to the login screen. And then once that's done, we'll run a quick recap. So let's uh, get it back into the housing. Okay, 20 volts, 1.6 amp, which is good. Do we get an Apple logo? Apple logo, Apple logo. Apple logo. So this machine is working, it's booting to the login screen. Um, so this was a successful repair. Um, it's on the login screen now. Everything looks good. I'm going to switch over to the display screen and we'll run a recap of this repair. So a machine came in completely dead. No signs of life. Pulling 5 volts instead of 20 and 0 amp draw. First thing we did was pull the board and run a visual inspection. Everything looked perfect. So we checked uh, PP bus. G3 hot, which is the uh, main power line in the machine. Um, it was zero volts, so we, uh, we searched that line in the schematics and we cycled through until we found where it was created, where it comes from. So right here to system, and we found that it's coming from ISL 9239U7000. So we did in fact have our voltage here on PPDC in, which meant the chip was re receiving its uh, power. Um, so we checked PP3V3, which appears to be its enable, and it was missing. Um, but we checked uh, where that line ca came from, and it looked uh, kind of like it, that line. was a situation where uh, PP bus G3 hot fed fed PP3V3 and it kind of fed itself. Um, I don't, I'm not too familiar with how that uh, configuration works, but it did lead us to um, theorizing that the chip itself was the problem because it was receiving voltage, but it wasn't uh, outputting uh, PP bus G3 hot to the system. So we replaced U7000 ISL 9239 and it perfectly resolved the issue. The MacBook is fully functional. So successful repair. Uh, forgive me if I look and sound tired. I've been uh, actually working for, it must be 30 straight hours now. So I'm gonna go straight to bed after this. Actually, I have to do one more job and then I'm gonna go straight to bed. If you learned something and you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.